Thank you very much, Sister Joy, for that beautiful song. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is the first Sunday that uh, Pastor John will not be here uh, after the missions conference. So please bear with me. And please, uh, may I request everybody to please stand up. Let's uh, give reverence to the Word of God. Let's open our Bibles. Uh, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, we'll read verses 10 up to 13. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. These are very familiar verses. Uh, I'm sure everybody has read or has heard these verses, but this is our text for tonight. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. Are you there? Let's read all the verses together, starting with verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now the last care of me had flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but he lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there will be to be in the land. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and of all things I am instructed, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer me. I can do all things through Christ, which then can me. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, O Lord, we thank you for this time that you have given us to be together again, O Lord, to uh, listen to your word, to study your word. Our prayer, Lord, is that the Holy Spirit work in our hearts, our minds, so that we'll be able to learn something tonight, O Lord. Uh, let your name be glorified tonight, O Lord, and may our brethren here be challenged by your word tonight, O Lord. We thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to learn and Listen to your word, O Lord. Jesus, our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Again, good evening. Once again. <clears throat> the title of our message for tonight, I think you have your handouts with you. The title of the message is The Secret of Contentment. The Secret of Contentment. In verse, uh, in verse number 11, Apostle Paul said, Now that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. As we all know, contentment is very elusive. It is a very elusive condition for most people, even for Christians. More often than not, the world leads to believe that contentment is something that comes from outside. Something that usually seems to be just beyond their grasp. Contentment tends to be viewed in the context of possessions, how much money you have in the bank, how huge your house is, how stable your job is, how many cars you have, or how many possessions or investments you have, or power. The higher position you uh, accomplish or occupy, people think that that will give you contentment or that will give them contentment or prestige. People would run for office because of prestige, thinking that they will get contentment out of that prestige. But according to Apostle Paul, contentment cannot be defined by any of these things cannot be defined by any of these things. Not material things, not power, not authority, and not prestige. Paul found the real meaning of contentment not in something, but in someone. In someone. Real contentment is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. However, knowing the fact that Yes, we are saved. We have the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Automatically, we became a child of God because of that. But, that doesn't automatically make us know how to be content. Do you agree? Amen. It's not automatic. The moment you got saved, contentment will still not be there. A lot of Christians have been Christians for a long time, but up to this point, they're not contented with their lives. <clears throat> I 
Contentment, according to Paul, must be learned. It must be learned. Philippians chapter 3 and 4 give us some principles for contentment. We can learn the secret of God through His Word because He has revealed the secret of contentment for all of His children to profit by. This is only from His Word, by His Word, and through the power of His Word. We can learn from what Paul had learned. That is why he, he uh, wrote this, uh, this epistle to the Church of Philippi. For them to learn about contentment. For Christians to learn about contentment. For us here in this place to learn about contentment. Three points for this uh, uh, learning. Number one, there is a secret of contentment. There is a secret of contentment. Please write the word contentment in your notes. Knowing the secret results in not relying upon one substance. In Isaiah chapter 3 verse 8 it says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. What well, Apostle Paul is saying that he has lost all things, but he doesn't mind. For him, all of those are done. What is done? Dumi. Dumi. For him, it is all done. Because what is important? That he is able to continue the cause of Christ. Knowing the secret results in not relying upon, upon one substance. We should not rely on the money that we have now. We should not rely on our jobs. We should not rely on our possessions. Because any moment, God can take that away from us. Amen. I was hearing you know, a story from Sister Precious earlier. Uh, Sister Joy and uh, her were uh, prayer partners. And uh, one of the prayer requests was stability for the job of Brother June because apparently they have a new CEO and there's a news that 300 people or 300 staff of CAFCO will be terminated in the next few weeks. It used to be very stable working for Qatar Petroleum or CAFCO or CAFCO is a sought after job. You know, if you're working for these companies, you are like secured for a lifetime. <coughs> but not anymore. Not anymore. That is why the teaching of Paul said we should not rely upon one substance. And letter B, knowing the secret causes one to be self-sufficient. It causes us to be self-sufficient. We should learn that there is a secret of contentment. And that, the secret, causes one to be self-sufficient. What does it mean? In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, it says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lack opportunity. In verse 11, it says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. The word content means self-sufficiency, independence of all external resources. <clears throat> One might say, I don't need anybody. I choose to live my life on my own terms. However, this is not the kind of self-sufficiency that Paul is speaking of here. The idea of the word contentment is that a city that comes under siege or a city that has been uh, occupied by rebels, for example, is cut off from all outside resources. Yet, the city is sufficient. The city has sufficient supplies within its walls to survive. Paul is saying that he had learned that he did not need things to make him happy. That's why he called it dumb. 
those things are not important to him. Those things will not make him happy. He had found within himself an inexhaustible resource for every circumstance and situation that he was in. Knowing the secret of contentment is vitally important because the moment we become dependent upon the world to give our life meaning, because people would relate their life's meaning to the world or what the world can offer. Their happiness and joy. We place ourselves in a compromising situation. The Christian is something of a wealthy bankrupt. We are bankrupt and yet wealthy. Why is that? That's the idea in Paul's statement that he said, suffered the loss of all things that he might win Christ. Satan can tempt us if we leave, uh, sorry, Satan cannot tempt us if we live with this kind of principle. If Satan should tempt us saying, if you do what I want to do, I will give you this and this and this. I'll give you a good job. I'll give you a good paying job. I will give you a nice house. A nice car. Satan will use anything to tempt you. However, if you are, if you uh, being abided by this principle, you can give. You will say to Satan, "You can't give me anything because I have already everything." In 2 Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight, it says, "And God is able to make all grace abound toward you." that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. If Satan will still tempt you saying, if you, if you do not do what I want you to do, I will take this away from you. And this, and this. I will take away your job. I will take away your money. I will take away your security. But if you are abided by this principle, you will say to Satan, you cannot threaten me with that because I don't have anything. I don't have anything. The Lord Jesus Christ has been tempted by Satan. Not only once, not only twice, but thrice. We can, have that, we can read that account in Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 up to 10. Satan offered him kingdoms and glory. But what the Lord Jesus Christ said, what did he say? First he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of God's mouth. And then he said, you cannot tempt the Lord like God. And then he said, lastly, what did he say? Nobody remember? I also can't remember. <laughs> Matthew chapter 4, verse 13, I think, 14. Can you flash that? Let's read. What did the Lord say, lastly? I think 9. Yeah, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only, only shall thou serve. That is also a good response to Satan, and Satan is trying to tempt us. You cannot tempt me with anything. I cannot worship you, because my worship is only true to God, and God alone. <clears throat> so, there's a secret to contentment. There's a secret to contentment. And number two, the secret of contentment must be learned in circumstances. The secret of contentment must be learned in circumstances. Please write the word circumstances. Paul stated that he had learned to be content. We can find that in verse 11 of our text. He said, learn to be content. The word learned means 
Learn by experience. Learn by experience. In verse 12, Apostle Paul says that he had been instructed how to be content in both abounding and abasement. The word used there means initiated into secret. Paul was basically saying, through experience, I have learned the secret of contentment. Contentment is not acquired instantly. It is not acquired instantly. Paul said that he had learned the secret of contentment by those things that happened in his daily life. In verse 12, he says, I know both how to be abased, I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Contentment is learned from circumstances. That is why we have Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says there, what does it say? And we know that all things work together for good for them that love God. And to them that are called according to His purpose. I will tell you a story. I read this from the internet. Bear with me with this story. But this is a very nice read. Uh, because Brother Ronald, when he was doing the outline, he told me that I think your outline would mean a very short message. And then, he told me to expound and give some illustration. So, I searched, I researched, and found this story very interesting. It says, there is a man named Dog McKnight, and at the age of 32, I don't know if you heard about him, he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. For those who are in the medical field, you know what this is. Multiple sclerosis. I cannot explain it. But over the next 16 years, it would cost him his career, his mobility, and eventually his life. Because of MS, they call it MS, multiple sclerosis, he couldn't feed himself. Hindi na siya makakain ng sarili niya. Or even walk. Hindi na siya makalaka. Okay? And he battled depression and fear. Of course, you will battle depression and fear because of your sickness. You know, uh, for a few weeks, I've been having pain in my back and also my shoulder. And it bothers me, especially in the evening. All the more if you have this illness, multiple sclerosis. <clears throat> he battled depression and fear. But through it all, dog never lost his sense of gratitude. Evidence of this was seen in his prayer list. Friends in his congregation asked him to complete a list of requests so they could pray for him or intercede for him. His response included 18... <coughs> Blessings. So he wrote down all the prayer requests and the list included 18 blessings for which to be grateful for. And then six concerns for which to be prayerful. So out of the list, 18 were all gratitude and six were requests to be prayerful. Can you imagine his situation? You cannot even walk anymore. However, you can see in his heart his gratitude towards him. His blessings, uh, sorry, so you can see, you know, uh, three, uh, six out of 18, so 25% request, 75% gratefulness to the Lord. His blessings outweigh his needs by three times. By three times. Dog McKnight had learned or had learned to be content. In whatever state he was. He was sick, he was ill, he cannot walk anymore, and yet he was contented and was able to list down, you know, 18 gratifying notes to God and only six requests. Such contentment is learned. 
said he didn't learn it instantly. It isn't natural. It is not natural for men to be content. We are not exempted. Every one of us will not be contented. Amen? We cannot be contented. It is learned because it is natural. We are not born with it. It is not even a gift. It is not even a gift. It is not even a gift. Our tendency is to look for things that will make us content. Amen? Good job. Nice clothes. Nice bags. Nice shoes. Nice car. Nice house. Big house. Money in the bank. Investments. We are looking for things that will satisfy us. Those things that are better, or if even events that are next, rather than putting forth the effort it takes to learn to be content. We are looking for things. Why not look for the things that you already have and be contented with what you have? And learn to be contented with what you have. The effort it takes to learn to be content. Now I have a question for everyone, but you don't have to answer. This is a question. What is the what is one thing se separating you from joy? Or even happiness? What is one thing that is separating you from joy or even happiness? And then try to answer with a statement like this. I will be happy when blank. Do you get the question? Ask yourself, what is that one thing that is lacking for you to be happy or joyful? And then, uh, and then answer it by this statement, I will be happy when blank. So probably you will answer, I will be happy when I'm healed, if you are sick. I'll be happy when I'm promoted, if you are longing for promotion or if you are longing for more money. I'll be happy when I'm married, if you are still single. Amen? Single? Amen. Or, I'll be happy when I have a house. Or, I will be happy when I have a car. Or, I'll be happy when I have money in the bank. Okay. So, write that answer firmly in your minds. Do you have an answer in your mind? Ready? The question? Okay. With the answer firmly in mind, sorry, okay, and if the answer is, or if, what if, what if, the sheep never come in, or never comes in, or your dream never comes true. Okay, you, you want that. But the thing that will make you happy is to have a car. But what if you will not have a car in your lifetime? Or what will make you happy is to have a house. What if you die without a house? Or you are longing to be president of a company, but you are not able to achieve, achieve that dream. Or if the situation never changed, you're sick, but you're not healed. You're praying for something, and God is not giving you your prayer. Okay. The next question: Would you be happy, or could you be happy? God didn't give you the house. God didn't give you the good job. God didn't give you the money. God did, did not give you the healing. Could you be happy? 
If not, if you cannot be happy, then you are living into the clause of discontent. Clause, as in, you are caught with discontent. The word abase means to make low, to humble, to humiliate. In learning the secret of contentment, Paul had often experienced what it is like to be hungry or to suffer need. Paul had learned to experience contentment even in the loss of all things. That was due to the fact that he had learned to rely upon he who was everything. He who was everything. He who was the source of his supply. Who is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In essence, Paul considered himself a wealthy pauper. He doesn't have anything in this world, but yet he considered himself wealthy, a millionaire. Most of us would not sign up for courses in abasement. We don't want this. We don't want to go, we don't want to go through hardships. We don't want to lose our jobs. We don't want to lose our money. We don't want to go through this exercise. We don't want to go through this lesson. Does anybody here wants to, do, to go through that? It's normal not, not to think about it. <clears throat> However, if we would learn to experience true contentment, these things are necessary. We need to go through hardships. We need to go through hunger. We need to lose something. Our health. Our wealth. Amen? For us to be able to learn. Learn to be contented. Because it's easy. If you have money, if you have a good job, Money in the bank, you're driving a new car, it's so easy to say, I am contented. Amen? It's very easy. However, you have to go through this like the Apostle Paul. He's a spiritual giant. And yet he experienced all of this. Why? For him to be to learn to be content. And so he can be an example to all of us. He can be an example to all of us. The world seeks to give us contentment through more possessions. You are able to land a new job, a good job. After a few years, you want more. You are able to gain money. You want more. You are given a car, a Toyota car. Three years after, you want a BMW. Amen? You want, God has given you a small house. After five years, you want a bigger house because your neighbor has bigger houses. God seeks to give us contentment through decreased desires. You see the opposite? World will offer you all of this in the, all, all the things in this world. Nice houses, nice clothes, nice shoes, nice bags. Amen, ladies? However, Amen. the Lord is telling us to decrease our desires. Decrease our desires. More accurately, God seeks to produce contentment in us by giving us a singularity of desire, which is desiring the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Amen. This is very important for Christians. Over the course of Paul's life, he had been imprisoned, beaten, Flogged, stoned, persecuted, and other times he was protected. He was cared for by saints. Sometimes he was alone. Sometimes there were friends present. However, in every situation, he learned to be contented. He learned contentment. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, Apostle Paul exhorted a young pastor named 
Timothy. It says in uh, first in Timothy chapter six verse six, first Timothy chapter six verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, only food and raiment, food and clothes, Apostle Paul said. <clears throat> Let us be there with content. There is a saying that the richest person is not the one who has the most. The richest person is not the one who has the most, but the one who needs the least. The richest person is someone who needs the least. The secret of contentment must be learned in circumstances. Thus, our hearts need to teach. No. Thus, the need for our hearts to be teachable. To be teachable. He wants us to learn from our present circumstances, from our past circumstances, and from our future circumstances. Instead of telling him what he wants him to change in us. Did you get that? We should ask for God to let our hearts be teachable hearts. Rather than asking what God, what we, what we want God to change in us. Or to change in our situation. Number three, Brother Ronald, I'm already 45 minutes preaching. The secret of contentment is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which is strengthened me. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The verses is saying, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Paul did not take pleasure in the pain itself, but in the power of Christ manifested through Him in times of infirmity, in times of reproach, in times of persecution, and in times of distress. We also, should, we also should learn to take pleasure in the power of Christ in times of distress. Paul found contentment in several things. Number one, no matter what earthly circumstances he experienced, he would always have this, he would always have his salvation. Amen? Amen. He said in the song, for uh, what is that song? For I know whom I believe in, and I'm persuaded that he is able to me in that which I promise unto him against the day. So he's confident that the Lord Jesus Christ is able to fulfill his promise to redeem us and to be with him in heaven. Number two, no matter what the situation he was in, the Lord would never forsake him. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, 13, verse 5 to 6, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Number three, no matter how good or how bad the situation were, the best of this world or the worst of this world could never compare to the joy and glory that we will have in heaven. If you are problematic, now, you don't have money in your pocket, you're suffering illness from illness, you're sick. No light can be seen at the end of the tunnel. Always remember, remember Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Always rejoice because we have salvation. Always rejoice because we have the Lord Jesus Christ. Always rejoice because one day 
you will be heaven, you will be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. There are two kinds of Christians. Number one, those who are constantly wanting things for Christ. When you pray, Lord, I want this, Lord, I want this, Lord, I want this, Lord, I want this, Lord, give this to my son, Lord, give this to my husband, Lord, give this to my friends, Lord, give this to me. Long list of wants. And number two, those who realize that they have already possessed all things in Christ. I wanted to read this story, but we were out of time. But this story was told by, Paul, by Pastor John one time. There's a British guy who was rich and doesn't have any relatives. And he, uh, he made his will, and then he asked somebody to auction all his properties. And then during the auction, the first one to be bidded was the picture of his son. And nobody was interested to buy it the portrait of his son. But there's this one guy who used to work with them, who loved that guy, who loved the son, the son of the rich man. Bought that for I think a very low amount, five riyals or something. And then during auction they would say once, twice, thrice, God. So auction is over. Because whoever bought the portrait will get all the estate. Will get all the estate. We can relate this with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the secret of contentment. If you have the Son, if you have the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have the faith. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, O oh Lord, we thank you for the message tonight. We thank you for your word. Thank you for the truths that we've heard, O oh Lord. Our prayers.